Take a leap of faith. Hello, welcome to Overstrand on the Norfolk coast, and we've got an epic, epic sky today. So, today's video, uh, following on from last week's video, is going to be about high speed photography we're going to really crank up the iso we're going to crank up the shutter speed and we're going to freeze these pounding rough, violent rough action-packed waves and do some lovely images like that which i hope you enjoy we're also going to do some long exposure photography because again this kind of weather works well it's a very gray day we've got weather fronts coming in all the time it's stopping raining it's raining i've been in and out of the camera bag putting the camera away putting the camera out again um, not easy sprays blowing about we've also got water from the sky so the lenses have to be very clean but i hope we're going to get some epic images it already looks great behind me i hope you agree so i'm definitely going to shoot that so maybe some minimalism is going to work really well today um, i don't really know what we're going to shoot to be honest but i'm pretty sure there's going to be lots of great images so stay tuned um, let's do the first one now the first thing i want to shoot is chroma pier and I shot this the other night in the blue hour. Looks really nice. I love the curve of this, the sea defences here, the groin going out to sea. The tide's slowly abating, so we're going to have to be quick for this. But you can see loads of sea mist as the, the wind is whipping up the sea as it's smashing onto the defences and pushing it across the coast, which is almost obscuring Chroma Pier. Uh, but it's going to look really nice with a long lens. Um, we've got a lovely dark, moody sky over the top uh, i'm going to make this again a lovely dark moody's got a moody picture maybe in monochrome who knows um, so let's shoot this i'm going to go something like iso 400 for this because i want to i want to get the waves that are coming in captured so they can show that they're rough long exposures makes everything calmer and uh, short exposures give a bit more dynamism and it kind of suits the scene so it suits the mood the sky, there's so much detail in it that I can burn that right in and make it really dark and moody if I want to. And then we've just got, you know, the eye's gonna be leading off to Chroma Pier, sitting beautifully in the distance there. I love the colors of this. I love this kind of gray blue, the steel blue that we get on days like this, on this Norfolk coast. It's wonderful, the dark sand, the dark sea, groins that just make everything look really rich and beautiful it always reminds me of blakeney and the north norfolk coast which is a fantastic place to come and visit if you haven't been there so let's shoot this now i'll talk you quickly through my settings right i've composed something up here which i really like um, let me just shoot this because i haven't done so far i'm really and i'll show you in a second i'm playing with this curved groin the curved sea defense because it looks absolutely wonderful we're shooting um, a 90 of a second at f8 for this and a 90 of a second is going to give me a little bit of motion blur i might actually let's go um let's go to f11 because i want to maybe make this a little bit slower which is going to give me 45th of a second and i'm just waiting now for these waves to come in as they roll in and as they backwash out it looks really really nice um, we have a Mr. Sean Mills beside us, who's, uh, I think, wanting to get on the beach. So let's get this captured quickly. Looks really lovely. Beautiful. F11, 45 second, ISO 72. Here comes the image. With um, Sean, uh, Sean Mills, Mersey Millsy, who's just picking his bag up to disappear. And behind me, we've got the very marvellous Gary Sugden, who is uh, busy shooting and, and hopefully he's going to be vlogging as well because he's, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. So go and check him out if you haven't done already. I'll put his links to below. So um, we've watched in the Thomas Heaton um, Nick Page photo trip for Adam Gibbs F4 road trip series and uh, that in one of those episodes they were photographing crashing waves and i learned a lot from that actually so i would normally shoot that about one two fifth two fifty of a second but they were shooting at a thousandth of a second to get these waves really frozen which i find is really interesting so um, i'm going to try the same we're going to put the 120 to 400 telephoto on i'm going to whack the iso up a little bit and we'll see what we get 
looking great though. I think the sun's going to break through soon. We're going to get some epic light. So if I talk you through my setup here, we've got the 100-400 Sigma on the Nikon Z7. And looking at the back of the camera here, we have got uh, F8. So I don't need a long, uh, a big aperture for this. 800 ISO and 2,000 of a second is my exposure. You can see the histogram is looking great there. And what I'm interested in is the light against that cliff in the background and also the fact that these waves are crashing against the seawall. I've set the camera onto low continuous so we've got four frames per second coming in if I need to change it a little bit more. I'm just watching the waves to see when they come off. I've got rid of the delay and it's pretty much bang, 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 bang. I just don't want to fill up the whole memory card full of images that I'm not going to use. So we have got some light coming in from just on the horizon there. It's coming across into the distance. So it's going to light up the, the cliff faces over there. In fact, this looks nice now. It's just going to add a little bit of contrast to the scene, which will look nice. I'm using a fast shutter speed to, to freeze the water. I want to get the fury and the power and the action all, all of this water that's smashing into the side here. The real power of nature. Using a tripod really just because I want to just get the composition pretty finely tuned and it just means I can just relax and look on the back of the screen. So I haven't got to worry about hand holding but of course you could hand hold this at 2,000 per second, no problem. Um, really, really lovely. The only problem with this kind of photography is that you end up with so many files <laughs> that um, you have to really sort through them but that's not a problem the light's looking really good i mean as the light improves i think it's going to be very obvious the ones that we like the best really enjoying this it's great fun done before but I haven't shot this like this for a long while so the tide is going out and the problems before this has been there's been so much foam that the bottom of the exposure has just been complete blanket of white and you need a bit of a mix of white and grey and for that the tide needs to be a little bit calmer so I think we're approaching key time for that so we're gonna go and shoot this I'm gonna put some a neutral density on the front probably a 10 stop clean the lens which is covered in sea spray which is another problem with long exposures on the coast when it's raining and let's see what we can get we can see if we can get this shot well let me get set up and i'll talk you around this exposure right i've got a portrait for this it's going to be about the groins going out and then kicking off to the right here 10 stop neutral density check the lens is clean uh, i'm going to work the exposure out on an app but once you've done it a few times, you kind of know what you're going to get. I'm looking for about a two minute exposure here. So I'll adjust the aperture and ISO to suit that. Uh, and let's see what we get. Okay, so at the moment, I'm getting 30 seconds at F11. You do with pumping that up a little bit more. So I've got choices here. I could either go to F16, which will give me a minute, or I can add another neutral density onto the front of the lens. Um, both of them are going to obviously degrade the image quality a little bit, but we're going to, so we'll do both. So let's go to F16 first, 60 seconds, so a whole minute of exposure. Doesn't look too bad to be fair anyway, but that will give me a really misty look. And then I'll do another one with some, uh, another ND on the front. Right, here we go. So we're going to go 
60 seconds, F16, an actual fact, in actual fact, because it's only a minute, the camera is coping with that. It, it, the actual, what I mean by that is I can see the histogram, uh, it's, it's brightening it up through the neutral density, and the histogram looks fine at F11 at uh, 60, that's a, of a whole minute. So we're gonna do a minute exposure first, um, I might then have to go down to F16 for a two minute exposure. But to be honest, the one minute exposure is probably gonna be all right. Um, but let's see. So composition is lovely. I really love these old groins. There's another ones over there which look really good. Uh, some really interesting shots from down the bottom. But getting down a little bit off this bank here, I'm just wary of a, a stray wave. And every so often you get a bigger, a big, wave that comes in and splashes. I don't want to cover the cameras in salt water, particularly. Um, so a couple of this, and then we'll move down and we'll have a look at what else we're getting. But now the tide's gone out, that white water is still there, but nowhere near as dominant as it was earlier. Now that's telling me the sky's a little bit burnt out. Um, but actually, that's not going to be too much of a problem. Might just do another one with AMD because what I want, what I want to do is blend this. And if the if the sky and the sea are too contrasty, might be a bit more of a problem. I don't really think it's going to be that much of a problem actually. But uh, let's just do one while we're here anyway. So um, another ND on. This is going to be the smallest one, and then we'll have to adjust the exposure to get something like a 60 second exposure because actually the picture itself looks all right. Actually, what I've decided to do is add a polarizer on the front, because I do often use a polarizer on these anyway, just to get any rid of any glare. But what it also does is it gives me another one and a half, two stops to play with. So this is now gonna be a 60 second exposure where I won't see any flashing highlights, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna bring the histogram. In fact, I can see the histogram has come down sufficiently so the camera doesn't even worry about it. Again, the flashing highlights, I'm talking about the JPEG, if I were to produce one, but I'm producing a raw file. So an actual fact, don't think it's gonna apply. I really don't. The histogram is pretty accurate, I always trust it. And I can see there's space on the highlight side. So not really that worried about it, I think it's gonna be okay. Right, here come the pictures. See what you think of this. Right, it's going to be the last one, I think. I've done a couple of other, hopefully you'll enjoy. This one is this kind of interesting groin here. We've got a cormorant, I think, on the end post there, enjoying his day, uh, just having a rest. He's been there quite a while, so I'll get him in my long exposure. Um, the reason I've come this side, because it looks quite good with those little posts there, but also we've got a dark, moody sky above. And rather than do the fine art thing, where everybody just does white skies, I'm gonna make this dark and blend it in and make it more of an image, I think. Um, I quite like it. Obviously, this side's in a little bit of shadow, so I might have to pull the shadows up. But looking at the histogram, I'm still getting plenty of detail in there, so that should be no problem whatsoever. But this is one minute, F11, ISO 64, got Sean behind me, um, merrily shooting away. He's had a great day, I hope. I think he has, so. Um, I'm gonna end it there. Here come all the images. I hope you've enjoyed the day. So we've got some fast and some slow shutter speeds making completely different sorts of images. Um, as ever, thanks ever so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. The channel's doing really well and I'm really, really pleased with all of that. So thanks ever so much for everybody who's watched any of my videos. We're on 1,500 subscribers now and over 100,000 views. And that's just immense. So really, really chuffed with that. Can't ask for anything else. Take care, look after yourself. See you next week. Goodbye. You and me could be so much more. There's something I've been dying to say.
take a leap of faith And I know you're the one Our story's just begun I'm never gonna let you go There's only 